Have you ever felt completely alone? Even when surrounded by people, it's a feeling that can sneak up on us during quiet moments or hit hard in the midst of a crowd. Loneliness isn't just about being physically alone, it's about feeling disconnected, like no one truly understands what you're going through. If this sounds familiar, you're not alone. In fact, many people experience deep feelings of isolation, especially during times of change, personal growth or spiritual awakening. It's a paradox of our times. In a world that's more connected than ever, we still find ourselves feeling detached and distant, wondering why we can't seem to bridge the gap between ourselves and others. But what if these feelings of isolation weren't just random suffering? What if they were a sign, a sign that you're on the brink of something greater, a signal that your inner world is shifting, expanding and evolving? In this video, we're going to dive deep into what it means to feel isolated or alone, and why these experiences are more than just moments of sadness or discomfort. Together, we'll explore the spiritual significance behind these feelings and how they can be used as a powerful tool for growth. My goal isn't just to help you understand your loneliness, it's to help you transform it, to turn what seems like emptiness into a space for self-discovery and empowerment. So let's embark on this journey together and uncover how your feelings of isolation might just be guiding you toward a deeper connection with yourself and with the world around you. Isolation isn't just a word. It's an emotion that can cut deep. When you're in the midst of it, it feels like a heavy fog that blankets everything, leaving you with a sense of emptiness that you just can't shake. It's more than simply being alone. It's lying awake at night, staring at the ceiling, while your thoughts echo in the silence. It's the struggle to connect with people you once shared so much with, only to find that your words don't seem to land and your presence feels out of place. The emotions that come with this kind of isolation are complex and layered. There's the obvious loneliness, a sense of being cut off from others, as if you're standing on the outside looking in. Then there's the emptiness that starts to settle in, like a void that seems to grow the more you try to fill it. And perhaps the hardest to face is the self-doubt. The lingering question of what's wrong with me that echoes in your mind, making you wonder if you'll ever truly feel connected again. But what if I told you that these feelings, as painful as they are, might actually be part of something bigger? You see, feelings of isolation often arise during times of personal transformation, especially during spiritual awakening when your inner world starts to shift and old beliefs, patterns and ways of being begin to crumble. It can leave you feeling exposed and uncertain. It's as if the foundation you've always stood on is breaking apart and you're left wondering where you'll find solid ground. During these times, you might start to notice that the things you used to find comfort in no longer bring the same sense of security. Relationships that once felt close may start to feel distant. Activities that used to bring joy might seem empty. This isn't a sign that you're doing something wrong. It's often a signal that you're outgrowing old ways of being and moving into a new phase of self-discovery. The truth is, isolation can be a byproduct of profound inner change. As you shed the old, there's a gap that forms a space between what was and what is yet to be. It can be a painful and disorienting space, but it's also a sacred one. Because in this emptiness, you're given the opportunity to rebuild, to rediscover who you are, and to align with a deeper sense of purpose. It may seem counterintuitive, but feelings of isolation can actually be a sign of growth, especially on a spiritual level. When we go through major shifts in consciousness, it's as though the old layers of our identity start to peel away. The things that once defined us, that gave us a sense of belonging or meaning, may no longer fit. It can be a disorienting experience, like walking through a door that shuts behind you, only to find that the place you end up in is unfamiliar and unsettling. But this process is not random. In fact, it's a natural part of evolving into a higher state of awareness. 
As you let go of old beliefs and patterns, you're essentially shedding the skin of your former self. And with that shedding comes a sense of vulnerability, a feeling of being exposed as you step into the unknown. This is where loneliness often appears, not as a punishment, but as an indication that you are in the midst of transformation. It's like a spiritual rite of passage, where what used to bring comfort is stripped away, creating space for something new to emerge. There's a concept in spiritual growth known as the dark night of the soul. It's a period of profound emotional or spiritual crisis where you may feel lost, disconnected, or even despairing. It's not just a rough patch in life. It's a time when everything you thought you knew is called into question. Your beliefs, your sense of self, and your understanding of the world may all seem to crumble, but this isn't the end. It's the beginning of something deeper. Because on the other side of this darkness lies a greater light, a more authentic version of you that's waiting to come through. The tension here is real. These feelings of loneliness and disconnection are challenging, and it's okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to admit that there are days when the weight feels too heavy and the path seems unclear. But it's important to understand that this discomfort serves a purpose. You are not being abandoned, you are being prepared. You're on the verge of a breakthrough. A shift that has the potential to elevate your consciousness and align you with a more profound sense of truth. So if you find yourself in this place of isolation, remember that it's not a sign that you're falling apart. It's a sign that you're in the process of coming together in a new and more meaningful way. It's the universe inviting you to let go of the familiar and embrace the transformative journey of growth. The dark night is not your final destination. It's the passageway to a higher state of being. It's easy to view isolation as a kind of punishment, a reminder that something isn't right. But what if we could shift our perspective and see solitude as a gift? A sacred space where we have the chance to reconnect with our inner selves, to reflect, and to tap into a deeper well of wisdom. Solitude doesn't have to be a place of suffering. It can be a place of empowerment, where the silence becomes an invitation to rediscover who you truly are, beyond the noise of the world and the expectations of others. When we embrace solitude, we create room for self-reflection. It's a time to pause and look within, to question what's really driving our thoughts and feelings, and to understand the deeper currents shaping our lives. This kind of introspection is powerful because it helps us peel away the layers of conditioning and reconnect with our true essence. It's in these quiet moments that our inner wisdom begins to speak to us, guiding us towards our authentic path. To make the most of solitude, there are practical tools we can use. Techniques that can transform lonely moments into opportunities for profound growth. Meditation, for instance, allows us to sit with ourselves and observe the thoughts that arise without judgment. It's a way to become more aware of the patterns we hold on to and to gently release the ones that no longer serve us. Journaling can be another powerful practice. Writing down our feelings and insights can help us see patterns in our thoughts and open the door to greater clarity. Grounding practices like walking barefoot on the earth or sitting quietly in nature can also help us reconnect with a sense of stability and presence. The natural world has a way of reminding us that we are part of something larger. That even in our solitude, we are connected to the rhythm of life itself. Taking a walk in nature, for instance, can be a profound way to reconnect with both ourselves and the world around us. The gentle rustling of leaves, the feel of the breeze on our skin, and the earth beneath our feet, all serve as reminders that growth happens in cycles, and even the quietest moments are essential for transformation. Remember those feelings of loneliness, emptiness and self-doubt we talked about earlier. Now let's reframe them. Instead of seeing them as evidence of something lacking, Consider that they might be signals guiding you towards deeper self-discovery. What if the discomfort isn't meant to break you down, but to break you open? To push you toward a higher level of self-understanding and growth? 
By embracing solitude, we can transform isolation from a source of suffering into a place of power, a place where we choose to face ourselves, to grow, and to emerge stronger than before. It's about turning inward and finding the courage to sit with our own truths, to let go of the need for external validation, and to realize that within us lies the power to shape our own lives. This is where self-empowerment begins. It's easy to feel like isolation is a solid wall that separates us from the world, but what if I told you that this sense of separation is often just an illusion, a trick played by the mind? When we're going through moments of intense loneliness, it can seem like we're cut off from everyone and everything. But in reality, we are all interconnected, woven into the same fabric of life. The feeling of being isolated might come from within, but the truth is that there's a deeper connection that runs through all of us. It's just a matter of seeing beyond the illusion. When you start to recognize that the isolation you feel is not a permanent state, but rather a temporary phase, a whole new world of possibilities opens up. You begin to realize that there are others who understand, who have felt the same loneliness, and emerge stronger because of it. There is a tribe out there for you, people who resonate with your journey, who share your newfound perspectives and interests. It may be a spiritual community, a mindfulness group, or even a small circle of like-minded individuals, but they are out there, waiting to connect on a deeper level. So how do you find your tribe? It starts with being open, open to new experiences, open to exploring different paths, and open to being vulnerable. When you put yourself out there with authenticity and share your true self, the right connections will naturally begin to form. You'll start attracting those who align with your energy, your values, and your vision. These are the people who can support you on your journey, who can help you continue growing and evolving. As we come to the end of this journey together, let's bring a sense of hope and possibility back into the picture. You may have started in a place of deep loneliness, feeling misunderstood or disconnected, but that doesn't have to be the end of your story. The experiences you've gone through can actually be the very things that prepare you to form deeper, more meaningful connections than ever before. When you've sat with your own feelings, faced your own shadows, and embraced your true self, you bring a new level of authenticity into your relationships. You come from a place of wholeness rather than seeking someone else to complete you. Remember, emerging from isolation doesn't mean going back to how things were. It means stepping into a new way of connecting, one that is grounded in truth, compassion and mutual understanding. The walls of separation begin to dissolve when you realize that even in your moments of loneliness, you were never truly alone. There is a shared humanity that binds us all, and meaningful connections are still waiting to be made. It's not just about finding others. It's about finding yourself in the presence of others. This is where the journey comes full circle, and the experience of isolation transforms into the power of connection. To wrap up, let's revisit the journey we've taken together in this video. We've explored the depths of isolation, its emotional impact, its spiritual significance, and how it can serve as a signpost on the path of personal transformation. While feeling alone can be incredibly painful, it can also be one of the most powerful catalysts for growth. It's in these moments of solitude that we confront our deepest fears, shed the layers that no longer serve us, and begin to uncover our true selves. But here's something to ponder. Could it be that feeling alone is actually the first step towards finding your true self? When you embrace the stillness and sit with your emotions, you may just discover that the loneliness you once feared is actually the gateway to profound inner strength and understanding. As the poet Rainer Maria Rilke once said, the only journey is the one within. So I encourage you to take this time of isolation and use it as an opportunity to grow to reflect and to reconnect with your own heart. The tools we discussed, meditation, journaling, grounding and reaching out to like-minded communities 
are here to help you turn your solitude into a place of empowerment rather than suffering. Now, I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever felt completely alone, even when surrounded by people? What helped you move through that feeling? Share your experiences in the comments below and let's create a space where we can all support each other on this journey of growth. And if you found value in the insights shared, explore the tools we talked about and see how they resonate with your path. Thank you for being here, for opening your heart and for taking a step towards understanding the deeper meaning behind your experiences. Remember, you are never truly alone and your journey is leading you exactly where you need to be. Until next time, stay empowered.